What is up everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And what you're about to watch is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Miami Dolphins preseason week number three preview. And this week in the preseason is going to be a little bit more exciting because Doug Marone is going to be letting some dogs off their leash and they are going to be playing in this game. And of course I'm talking about some starters are going to be playing from a series to two series to maybe even three series in this preseason game. So it's going to be a first look at most of the starters for the Jaguars. There still are nine guys that are not slated to play, and I will update you on who those guys are in the video. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Miami Dolphins preseason week number two preview. So as of now, like I said, nine players are going to be scratched for this game and will not be playing. Those nine guys are wide receiver Marquise Lee, 100%. Don't play Marquise Lee in the preseason. Hopefully he comes around during the regular season and he's still at peak performance and he's going to be able to do good things for us. I would not play him in the preseason. I mean, last time he played in the preseason, he had a season-ending knee injury. So I understand keeping him out. Definitely don't play him. Um, Alfred Blue, who I think is actually injured, so he won't be playing. And linebacker Jake Ryan, Quincy Williams, who's still hurt. Davis Toll, Charles Jones, Jeff Swaim. Josh Oliver and Marcel Darius. Now, one thing is for sure with Swaim and Oliver both not playing, my prediction is gonna be right. I feel like I don't know. I don't know 100%. But Ben Koyak and James O'Shaughnessy, I think they both fucking make the team, bro. I, and I think that they, you know, if these guys are are still hurt and injured by week one, then Koyak or O'Shaughnessy is gonna get the start at tight end. And y'all motherfuckers laughed at me. Y'all, y'all said. Ben Koyak? What do you even mean, Ben Koyak? What's a Ben Koyak? And I'm out here calling the shots and making all these predictions that might end up being true, but probably not. And even then, during the season, Oliver and Swain will probably take those spots. But to begin the season, I would have been right if these two are hurt and they don't play week one, which will be wild. But James O'Shaughnessy is another guy that I really want to keep watching because this guy looks like he's done a lot to help his hands in the offseason. Obviously made that big catch in the preseason game last week for 17 yards when Gardner Minshew slinged it to him. And he's looking good in training camp as well. I always thought James O'Shaughnessy was a guy that is a pretty solid tight end, better than you think. And honestly, he's like a caliber, like a starting caliber tight end. Like, no one in the league necessarily has like that be-all, end-all, bold, great tight end, except for a couple of teams, obviously. I mean, you got the Travis Kelseys of the world. You know, Hunter Henry, I think, is getting up there if you could stay healthy. You know, these guys have these types of tight ends, but, you know, league-wide, that's not the ever-growing tradition. You know, you usually have kind of an average tight end out there. And I honestly think James O'Shaughnessy is an average tight end option that we could have out there. And I think he's going to be getting a, signi a bit more playing time than you guys think in 2019, especially if he continues to have a really solid preseason. Now, of course, the most exciting thing about this preseason game is the starters are going to be in action. You know, Calais Campbell, he's still scheduled to play. You know, some of this might change. Uh, when the game, when by game time, you know what I mean? So some guys might be game time decisions, so a guy like Calais Campbell might not be playing. Uh, and, you know, it's going to be wild because I think Nick Foles is pretty much guaranteed to play, and if this offensive line holds up, hopefully, hopefully it, it holds up, you know, in these first couple of series because Norwell's playing, the whole front, the whole offensive line's playing. So that's going to be another thing to keep my eye on. I've said this throughout every single preseason game that I'm going to be keeping my eyes on the offensive line. It was mostly for the depth guys and guys that I think, you know, that are going to end up having to play if one of our starters go down. And, you know, it's inevitable to lose an offensive lineman every year. You know, you lose offensive linemen. They drop like flies. They get hurt all the time. But now we get a look at our starting five and those guys that are going to be playing those spots, starting at those spots during the 2019 season. And this is an offensive line on paper to me that looks really good and sounds really good and looks like they can hold up the offensive line and make sure that Nick Foles can stay on two feet. But tomorrow is going to be the, or on Thursday, this is going to go out on Tuesday, yeah. So Thursday, you know, we're going to see how well this offensive line could hold up. And we're going, to be, we're going to be going up against Miami, and Miami doesn't necessarily have that great of a pass rush. So if Foles is getting pressure in his face with the Miami front four and their blitz packages, then, you know, we might be, a little, we might be in trouble a little bit. We also got Leonard Fournette. He's going to be in there taking some carries. You know, a lot of people don't like the idea of Leonard Fournette going in there and getting carries because he has obvious injury issues and, you know, he's been injured. But I think that we need to see him play because I think that we really don't know what Leonard Fournette we're getting yet. And, you know, we need to see how much he's going to contribute. And John DeFilippo has been seeing all offseason. And recently, too, he's been bringing this up that the offense is going to be running through Leonard Fournette. 
Now, John DeFilippo Filippo might be saying that, and he might be leading that on that the offense is going to be running through Leonard Fournette, but I just don't believe it. I don't buy it. I think the offense is going to run through Nick Foles. I think the Jags are going to be a way more pass-heavy team this year, and that's I'm excited too because I know I know for a fact like the first or the second play when the ones are out there, we're going to be taking a deep shot, and it's either going to be like Chris Conley or Terrell Pryor, you know, one of those speedy guys. D.D. Westbrook maybe even, you know, I think that the Jags are going to take a shot right out of the gate, and I hope Nick Foles makes that connection because, oh my, dude, the whole Jaguar fan base, if he throws a spiral and he completes a 30-yard pass, everybody in the Jaguar community is going to come absolutely unglued because we haven't seen that in years, in at least a decade. We haven't seen, like, a gorgeous pass connect downfield, and Nick Foles has the opportunity to be the quarterback to do something like that and, you know, to watch just how desperate these Jaguar fans have been for a quarterback and good quarterback play for so, so long. Like, you know what I mean? It's going to be good to see Nick Foles out there. So I think that he's going to be, I think he's going to be more a part of the offense and more what these this offense is going to run through, you know? And I think that he he's a big part of this offense's success, and he's a big part of the whole season, too. Like, if Nick Foles turns out to not be a good investment, then we are going to be set back so many years. But if Foles contributes... He goes out there and even takes us to the playoffs. I think this becomes an attractive place again to play football. And I think guys like Jalen Ramsey are going to want to stay. Guys like Anik Ngakwe are going to want to stay here because they've seen how close we were. And, you know, we're itching closer and closer to the final goal of winning a Super Bowl. And Nick Foles is a guy that we really need to be a part of that. I think the Jags can replace Leonard Fournette easy peasy. I think that there's a couple of guys on the roster right now that could, you know, not necessarily replace him, but, you know, be make a good enough impact to be our starting running back you know that the the Jags aren't going to be getting anybody solid in the draft you know and I don't think the Jags should pay anybody up the ass so I think Leonard Fournette is way easily more replaceable than Nick Foles is that's just the bottom line to me I think more of the offense is going to be running through Nick Foles but speaking of the quarterback position uh, we are also going to be getting our f- a look of Gardner Minshew maybe playing with some starters because I think they're going to limit Nick Foles hard. I think that he plays one, two series. So Gardner's going to be coming in there probably with some starters still left on the field. So this is your, no, your golden opportunity to see my golden boy and see how well he does with actual NFL caliber guys. And it's going to be very, very, very exciting because, you know, he's going to be throwing to guys like DD, DJ Chark, possibly. Keelan Cole's going to be out there. You know, he's been throwing to those two kind of all preseason. But then you got guys like... D.D. Westbrook, Terrell Pryor, you know, all those guys. Guys are going to be going out there and making a difference. And then, you know, this is getting kind of towards the end of the preseason. So guys like McBride, you know, are going to have to kind of creep up the roster. C.J. Board as well. You know, these are guys that are going to have to compete and really try to knock off like a Keelan Cole for their final spot. So it's going to be interesting late in the game as well to see how these guys perform. Because the week four preseason game, no one really cares about. You know, we're one week away from the regular season. That's all we can think about. So, (laughs) you know, the week four preseason game, I think uh, it it won't determine much. I think it comes down to this game right here for the Jaguars as far as guys that are going to be on the roster bubble and, you know, see if they're going to make the team. So it should be an exciting game. I'm very excited to watch it, to see the Jags take on the Dolphins and to see some of the starters play as well. It's going to be bold. It's going to be awesome. I am super, super, super excited to watch these starters play because it makes me feel like we're inching closer and closer to football season. And I'd be lying to you guys if I didn't say that this football season is one that I'm really, really excited about and one that I I don't think I've been this excited for a Jaguar football season since last year. <laughs> I was gonna, I was about to say in a long time, but you know, I was actually pretty excited last year. And I was very excited. I'm excited every year. I'm an optimist. You know, I think the Jags have a chance to make the playoffs every year, so... Very, very excited for the 2019 Jaguar season. We're inching closer and closer. And on Thursday, we're going to be another game down to just one more preseason game. And then after that, ladies and gentlemen, is every single Jags game is going to be played on a Sunday up until the Jaguars win the Super Bowl on Super Sunday in February. And that was the Jaguars versus Dolphins preseason week number three preview. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week and the way I work with me, there's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, you guys have a great rest of your day.